by a bee. All right, Friday, December 2nd. I can't believe we're saying that, David Sears. And every time this show starts, it's kind of a surprise for San Antonio viewers. Right, it, it is. You never know. Our, it's like a, as we like to say, viewers all over the world. You know what? It's like a shuffling of the deck, right? We didn't know. Yeah. We don't know who we're going to get today. It's you and I. And it's uh, it's a pleasure to be here. with oh, you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, and uh, congratulations to you. You pretty much took <laughs> the reins of the uh, No Shave November. I, I, yeah. And here we are. To talk about that for a second, you know, I can't yeah. take the full credit. You know, it's, it's our team of guys. But thank you. Well, but uh, Fifteen of you guys. You, uh, my dear friend, over Ooh. three thousand dollars you've raised. Uh, we as a team have raised over 30,000. That's amazing. That's, that's record breaking. Amazing. Yeah, 10,000 more than, at least 10,000 more than last year. And so, and you know, if we talk about mm -hmm. how we did this, this, and yeah. this, but we really didn't do anything. It's, it's our community. All yeah. the folks who watch us and uh, pay attention and help us out with this, and man, can't thank you guys enough. Yeah. It, 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 Always. Yeah. Santa, that's one thing I yeah. love about this city. Been here, I don't know, four or five decades now. Can't keep, <laughs> can't keep track. Yeah. That's one thing. Whenever you ask them to step up for stuff like this, right. They always do it, even in this tough time. I mean, you know, we're all paying more for yeah. bread and eggs and it's gas inflation. and everything else. It's a real thing. And still people are stepping up and helping yeah, out. Yeah, it's a reflection awesome. a so. reflection of our community. Yeah, over $30,000. So thank you if you're watching this at home. We appreciate the donations. Yeah. The great thing is, David, they could still donate yeah. uh, right now, ksat.com slash no shave. Although our campaign has ended, we are still collecting those funds through the end of the year. So That's nice. 13 cancer foundations will benefit. So and also big shout out to the good barber. You yeah. had a nice shave. Yeah, they were they were great over there. Yeah, like, our guys got pampered nice. yesterday, so appreciate that. So, I joke that was thank for you me. All. Yeah, so and we know that. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people probably donated because they know somebody either really close to them or has some kind of uh, friendship with somebody who's who suffered is. from cancer or maybe a family member that that they've had to help through right. through that situation. Yeah, so, no one um, is immune know to everybody's this. Touched, so yeah, so we are we are touched yeah. by the uh, by the reaction from San Antonio, and especially during so, this time. Yeah, yeah thank so. you again. You know, a lot awesome of news stuff. to get to yeah. today. You know, we'll just start there at the top, David. Uh, former San Antonio police officer James Brennan is facing a new charge after being indicted by a grand jury. Brennan is accused of shooting 17-year-old Eric Cantu while he was just eating in a McDonald's parking lot on October 2nd. Brennan now faces an attempted murder charge along with the two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant. The first aggravated assault charge and the attempted murder are for Kanthu, who was shot multiple times. He spent weeks on life support and was just released from the hospital last week. The second aggravated assault charge is for Kanthu's passenger, a teenage girl who was not hurt in the shooting. The Bear County District Attorney is still waiting on a court date. And we're going to continue to follow this story. So obviously, look for those updates on air and online at ksat.com. And, you know, we know that Brennan had at least served seven months or had seven months of experience working when that shooting did take yeah. place. So, so he was uh, he was a very young officer. And so now that training comes into question, was he properly trained before he got out there? Because if you remember the video, he walked up to the car mm -hmm. and opened the door without saying anything to Cantu and then wanted Cantu to get out and that's when Cantu Stru threw it in reverse and then took off and, and that's when the shooting shots, started. Right, so, and, yeah, and McManus so. did uh, also say that that actually violated the uh, policies of the police department shooting at a moving vehicle. So uh, a lot of news and we also know the district attorney has been very opinionated about that mm -hmm. as well. The good news for Cantu is he got out of the hospital, I believe it was last week that he got out after about seven weeks of going through multiple surgeries and we know that he suffered injuries to his stomach, diaphragm, lungs, liver, bicep, and forearm. He's also wearing a tracheotomy. So right. seriously, he, uh, he's been seriously. through a lot and was in a coma for a while. Right, so. yeah, I think it was a touch and go for a while. So, yeah. you know, a, a serious injury. So we know that this is gonna be a saga that continues to play out and uh, we're gonna have to see how this develops and uh, we'll monitor that. Also, a uh, former NFL player, Antonio Brown, is wanted this morning by the Tampa Police Department. Speaking of a saga that's going to play out, this, yeah. they issued the arrest warrant for Brown over an alleged domestic violence incident that happened back on Monday. Police say the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer wide receiver got into an argument with a woman at a home in South Tampa, and that turned physical. Investigators say Brown tried to kick the woman out of the house and then locked her out. Brown is wanted for battery. Now, Brown was a member of the Bucks when they won the Super Bowl last year, but the team released him this Janu January when he walked off the field in the middle of a game. And I was reading more on this. Uh, you know, I know that in 2020, he was actually also suspended for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy. Yeah. 
after pleading no contest to burglary and criminal mischief. Now, those charges were actually related to a fight he had with a moving truck driver that was outside of his house. So he's uh, he's had his problems. And if you remember, the reason the Tampa Bay let him go was mm -hmm. he walked off the field in the middle of right. the game, but he threw part of his uniform up in the stands yeah. and, and did all kinds of stuff. And apparently, from, from some other reports, he actually threw a shoe at this woman I who was that. in his house, and then he threatened to shoot her. And so that's one of the reasons why police reacted so fast is apparently he has a couple of guns yes. and they tried to get him to where he could not get a hold of these guns, but the judge, uh, the judge denied that petition. So, yeah, it's um, a so troubled, this is troubled pass uh, yeah. on and off the field. So yeah, you said it right. Saga that we're gonna have to see that just plays yeah, out this there. Is, this is gonna last a while. Yeah. So, all right. So if you've been to McDonald's lately or any other fast food <laughs> and you pull up to the drive through yeah. and you sit at the window and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait and you finally get your food mm -hmm. and then you drive off. Well, you have human contact, right? Yeah. McDonald's is trying to uh, take away the human contact. I'm okay with that, that sometimes, on some days, not, right. not in general. I love the human contact. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> McDonald's in Fort Worth is working on making its fast food even faster. They're doing so by testing a food conveyor belt and pickup area for delivery. Well, you know, convenience See, is right there. great. There it is. There's the conveyor belt. The drive through of the future is smaller than most McDonald's specifically dined for to go orders, but these are labor saving kiosks for placing takeout orders and parking spots dedicated for mobile app users curbside pickup. Yeah, this McDonald's does a lot of that. It's in Fort Worth, so it does it does a lot of that. It's not a real big McDonald's. But what if somebody hit? So you know, humans are going to have to operate all this. Oh stuff, yeah, right? someone's going to have to. So do what something. if somebody hits the conveyor belt and it goes like hyperspeed, and the food comes flying off of there so, and, and you know right into your window? Sounds like an I Love Lucy episode. I think yeah, it sounds like we're waiting to happen there, right? <laughs> There's going to be some kinks. They got to work out on this thing. But, you know, they say that the industry drive-through times are 45 yeah. seconds slower on average for 20 to 22 compared to pre pandemic days so but if you got to stop and pick up your food off the driveway because it missed your window or you didn't catch it that's then, true that's gonna slow things down even more isn't it? Uh, I'd give that a go you know I'd give it a go see how it oh. see how it goes but you know, yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty convenient who's gonna be the tester who's willing to drive up and have food shot at him I think we need to have a K <laughs> cannon on the road well that would see be what happens drive through there <laughs> get it. all right so for uh, galaxy fans this is this is your time the first yeah. trailer for guardians of the galaxy <laughs> volume three finally here all right that teaser clip features the characters from the first two films including star lord played by chris pratt pratt that is in gamora played by zoe saldana the trilogy's closing chapter also brings back groot, groot. Voice, vo <laughs> voiced by vin diesel so here's a look at that trailer we're talking about We were gone for quite a while. But no matter what happens next, the galaxy still needs its guardians. Hello, we come in peace. <laughs> come on, Drax. Seriously, dude? No, 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 no! Ow! <laughs> Don't forget where we came from. We have been running our whole lives. Pete, I'm done running. Well, I love the way that opened up. Well, I wasn't expecting I had, that was our first time watching that, David, and uh, it looks pretty spectacular. You know, uh, I remember I, I have not kept up with the Marvel Universe. There's so many movies out there to kind of track and, and follow these stories, characters. But I remember Guardians of the Galaxy was one of those films I was excited about when it came out originally. The first one went with my dad and he thought it was hysterical. I mean, it's, it's very comical and I think that's what's great about this action flick is it has that they hint gotta, of comedy. They gotta work on their dodgeball techniques. Yeah. <laughs> they, gotta, they, they gotta watch the dodgeball movie well, so they can get dodge, duck, <laughs> dive, dip, dodge. The five, the five Ds, you just told me about the that. Which, yeah, the yeah five but did you, did, you, did you catch it? I'm gonna write it down now on my pen and paper, dodge. dodge. All right, dodge, guys, give me dodge. one second. Dip, 
Dodge. Dodge. We're gonna get this. On, we're gonna get this under control. Movie. But you know what? We gotta watch the first two and then get back to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. We'll hit theaters this May. All right, it's been a wild day with a lot of fog this morning. Let's see what the weekend's like. Here is Mike Osterhage with a forecast for us. Well, ever since yesterday, when all that humidity started working its way in here and all that mist and drizzle, and we've been dealing with that overnight and throughout the, the morning hours. We only dropped down to the 50s, but it was that cold, cold 50 degrees, cold and wet, and we still have a lot of fog around. That's going to be, it's pretty darn stubborn fog. We'll actually see a little bit of sunshine, very, very limited amount of sunshine later on today. Temperatures are in the mid and upper 50s, starting to creep into the low 60s, and that's after we started off again in the low 50s this morning. And and it's been kind of all together as temperatures creep upward somewhat. And that's because of the cloud cover and all that moisture around here keeps things very consistent. We'll make it up to 70 again later on today. Limited sunshine. Then tomorrow, it is going to be on the milder side. Really, temperatures aren't going to move that much from late this afternoon into tomorrow. And that will be our high for the day because the front moves through in the mid morning hours. May squeeze out a couple of showers. Really wouldn't count on that. We will have some mist though in the morning. Then by the afternoon, we are going to be at 59 degrees and continuing to drop down by early evening into the mid 50s. Then we drop down to 50 on uh, Sunday morning. Still going to have plenty of clouds around uh, throughout the day tom uh, tomorrow. And then Sunday, a little bit of sunshine mixed in 68 degrees. Then after that, boy, oh boy, it is going to be just a warm and humid first full week of December. I was, uh, you know, just telling David right now that forecast is not a good looking forecast on the uh, next week. You know, it's going to be a little warm. I think for the holidays, people enjoy kind of the cooler weather, but you know, miss a little bit of sunshine, especially if you're out decorating your house. You don't want to be sweating while you're decorating. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah. Have you put your lights up yet? Gotten, Outside? We, we've uh, we've accomplished some. OK, of the decoration. Oh, you know, progress is something yes, I have not well, started. I've not started we made a little progress. We I was outside stuff. Done. Yeah, I was telling Mike that uh, I, I purchased those solar panel lights uh, where you don't oh, have yeah? to. Yeah, they're great on Amazon, but uh, there's not been any sun. So, see, well, yeah, see, so it kind of defeats the purpose. So, hey. Speaking of shining bright <laughs> tonight, the UTSA right. Roadrunners. All right. be shining bright against the University of North Texas. This is the Conference USA Championship game. So in just a few minutes, in about 45 minutes, the parking lot over there at the Alamo Dome is going to open up for all the tailgaters moving in. <laughs> you know, you got to start at noon to get warmed up yeah. for the 630 kickoff if you're a fan. Oh, I don't yeah. know what the players are doing, how they're getting warmed up, but we but know what the fans, fans are doing. you got to pack the dome, yeah. right? We know that uh, fan zones also open at 330 in the afternoon. There's actually a spirit walk at 415. So it seems like they got a whole slew of yeah. events lined up for everybody. This is going to be a lot of fun. Remember, and we, we mentioned it several times, but remember the mayor earlier this week yeah. was, was on our uh, six o'clock show and he was like imploring people to show up, show come up. on out, show off San Antonio because it's not just for the for the team. It, it makes the city look good. When it you've does. got a 56,000 people stuffed into that Alamo Dome yelling and screaming. San Antonio looks good. North Texas is going, whoa. Yeah, so, you know what? We know yeah, we can pack so. that dome. Because at 430, those doors are going to open up and yeah. 630 is kickoff. Don't forget free parking at City Lots between 4 and 2 a.m. And if you're a soccer fan or just love to cheer for the USA, don't forget tomorrow morning. Yeah, nine o'clock USA and Netherlands Ooh. in the World Cup. So when you get home tonight, set yeah. your alarm. I know a lot of people. We, my family's. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. About it. People stayed up late on Friday night and have to get up early to watch soccer on Saturday. Yeah. My dad, uh, my whole, my my parents. Every every uh, time a FIFA rolls around, we do. We all pick a team, and you know it's a family uh -huh. thing. And when we have a, ch a chart board at home, and my dad marks the wins and the losses and the ties, who's out. Oh, yeah. So right now, my nephew's team USA. So. He's excited about this. So you, so, and what was you? Did you have a team? I had Berlin, uh, just 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 oh. for giggles, just to see what sure. would happen. Uh -oh. You know, sometimes I like to pick a Sorry. random team, but uh, Mexico Oops. as well. For um, both those, my, are out. yeah, yeah, yeah they're already out. So Mexico, my nephew, right. six year, six, seven year old, he, USA. So who would have thought? And if UTSA tonight and soccer is not enough for you, yeah, we got more. Bernie plays tonight, high school football. All right, Cal Allen, and then tomorrow, it is Brennan and. Wesley. It's a busy weekend for our friends in the sports department and yep. obviously the sports fans here in our community. Lots and to show up for. Oh, by the way, the Spurs play tonight too. And oh yeah, the Spurs. <laughs> go Spurs go, by the way. Of <laughs> all the stuff going on, the Spurs are in there in the mix as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, those guys over there in the sports department, ooh, good luck tonight. Busy, and tomorrow. Busy, busy, busy weekend, but 
David, our, uh, right. my day is pretty much over, go. but it was great chatting with you. We'll see you at 11 a.m. on Monday. And y'all have a great weekend.